This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Taste and see that the Lord is good indeed. A very warm welcome to you, to Holy Trinity Lutheran Church, those of you in the Chicagoland area and beyond, as we gather this morning around word and table and to receive gifts of grace to strengthen us for the living of our lives in these challenging times. So that you can see that you are part of a community and not just gathered as one, two, three, or four people in your home, please now turn on the gallery view in Zoom, if you're in Zoom, uh, and wave and greet one another as you scroll through the various pages, knowing that whoever you are, whatever, your religious and spiritual background, whoever you love and marry, whatever the color of your skin or gender identity, you are welcome among us as we work for a better world, as we work to dismantle racism, as we work to care for the earth. So a warm welcome to all of you, and we now begin with our gathering hymn. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and, and also, also with, with you. you. Let us pray.
generous God. Your generosity waters the world with goodness and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit. And with this food, fill all the starving world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Genesis. The same night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female slaves, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok, he took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then the man said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked the man, Please tell me your name. But the man said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there the man blessed Jacob. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Peniel, limping because of his hip. Word of God, Word of Life. Hear a just cause, O Lord, give heed to my cry. Listen to my prayer, which does not come from lying Let my vindication come forth from your presence. Let your eyes be fixed on justice. Examine my heart, visit me by night. Melt me down, you will find no impurity in me. I have not regarded what others do. At the word of your lips, I have avoided the ways of the violent. My footsteps hold fast to your well-worn path, and my feet do not slip. I call upon you, O God, for you will answer me. Incline your ear to me and hear my words. Show me your marvelous loving kindness, O Savior of those who take refuge at your right hand from those who rise against them. But at my vindication I shall see your face, when I awake, I shall be satisfied, beholding your likeness. A reading from Romans. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. 
to them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came and said to Jesus, this is a deserted place and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but, but five loaves and two fish. And Jesus said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God. Amen. Jacob, Jacob is a man on the run. He plays fast and he plays loose. A shady character he is. And yet he's one of the patriarchs of our faith. From Jacob's birth, he is a trickster, an operator, grabbing and scrambling. He swindles his twin Esau out of the family birthright. Later, he and his mom connive to steal the family blessing from his blind dad. When his brother Esau tries to murder him, Jacob flees to his uncle Laban, who turns out to be a manipulative mess in himself. This narrative has so much dysfunction, so much hostility, Yet as our mysterious story begins today, Jacob's life is pretty good. He's well off. He's comfortable. I dare, dare say we've been on the run too. At least before March 2020, hurrying and scurrying, playing fast and loose, swindling more than our share from our siblings, repressing our nation's tragic history of racism, tricking our minds into believing that we could abuse and pollute the earth with no consequences, living with plenty privilege and more than enough dysfunction and hostility. Well, deceitful Jacob, true to his name as a heel grabber, concocts a bribe to deal with his brother's murderous threats. He sends a caravan across the river Jabbok, women, children, and all his assets. And then he collapses by the river, falls into a deep sleep. 
We know what it is to be worn out and exhausted. We know what it is to have a restless, sleepless night. Oh, how the mind can play tricks on us and all the demons come out to play. When I was in Colorado just weeks ago, in the mountains, I had a night in which I couldn't sleep at all. It was elusive to me. I grew up in Colorado. I've been in high altitudes all my life for the last years, every year. But the altitude combined with perhaps dehydration, wine, and very strenuous exercise, well, left me helpless. I couldn't quite breathe naturally. But thankfully, in mile-high Denver, to which I returned, sweet sleep came back. Jacob spends the night wrestling in the mud with a, with a, with an elusive, mysterious figure. Is it a man? Is it an angel? Is it a divine being? Is it Jacob's demons or the spirit of his brother Esau? Was it a dream? Was it a nightmare? Was it an apparition? Now, my only experience with uh, wrestling uh, was a long time ago in eighth grade PE. And my memories aren't so pleasant. I do know that you don't want to get pinned down in wrestling, but our own Pastor Ben wrestled from middle school through college and later became a wrestling coach. Even with all the infections and the sprains and the surgeries and the broken limbs, he has no regrets. At least that's what he said in a 2016 sermon. I can still remember. More than anything in life, Ben says that wrestling has taught him the beauty of struggling for a goal. Well, we're in the struggle of our lives these days, and we are pinned down as a country and as individuals, unable to move about, unable to breathe without worry. It's a once in a century reckoning. Our nerve is tested, our faith is tested. We're not sure of anything right now. And the struggle is downright freaky. Is this figure that wrestles Jacob his adversary or his advocate? Is this pandemic, this moment of racial reckoning, this reset, is this the worst thing that ever happened to us? Or in some ways, the best thing that could happen? Who knows? Like most of life's struggles, we didn't choose this. We didn't choose the shock, the interruption, wrestling away from us everything we knew or thought we knew. This week, I returned to one of my favorite books that uses the story of the wrestler Jacob as a guiding image, scarred by struggle, transformed by hope, by Benedict and Sister Joan Chittister. It seems more relevant than ever, and I would highly recommend it. There's no growth. There's no growth without resistance, Joan says. Sometimes we, like Jacob, struggle through the night without any hope of winning. It's persistence that brings our resilience. We get pinned down, we get up, we go on. Wrestling is not passive. It demands engagement. I wonder if all our struggles are really wrestling with God in some way. We could say that the elusive God in this wrestling match isn't safe, isn't sanitized, rather gets down and dirty to lift us out of the muck and then leaves room for us, welcomes, welcomes our resistance, welcomes our questions, welcomes our participation in the wrestling match of life. As one writer says, the opposite of loving God isn't fighting God. The opposite of loving God is not giving enough of a damn.
to fight. This season is an opportunity for great social change, for great spiritual renewal, a great reprioritization of values and commitments, yet it will not come without resistance. As Saul Alinsky, the great social reformer said, change means movement, and movement means friction. And there will be wounds, and there will be lifelong scars, as Pastor Ben reminds us. It's what wrestling is. It's what life is. The divine wrestler dislocates Jacob's hip. And from now on, Jacob's body and soul will be marked by struggle. He will be limping ever after. And he will have a new name, Israel, insinuating he will have a lifetime of striving, yet prevailing. As Joan Chittister adds, the burden of humanity, the burden of humanity is the knowledge that at any time, any one of us or all of us may be brought down to size, defeated, left to bear it. The message of the struggle is clear. No one, nothing is totally invulnerable. Well, as day breaks, that mysterious wrestler is done, <laughs> wants to let Jacob go, but in a most profound, in a most poignant, almost emotional moment, ever tenacious, Jacob says, no, I will not let you go until you bless me. As we wrestle with a mysterious, elusive God, as we wrestle with life, with the church, as we wrestle with our faith, as we wrestle with the world we live in. We may want to give up. We may want to walk away, yet God is in our corner. And there is a blessing in it all, a blessing in the limp, God hidden in the vulnerability of the cross, in Jesus' care for the last and least, God hidden in our heartbreak and struggle, in our fears and our hopes, too deep to name. There are amazing words in today's psalm that go so well with the story. Visit me by night and melt me down. When I awake, I shall see your face and I shall be satisfied. In today's gospel, the disciples they want to send the hungry crowd away rather than to wrestle with the challenge of feeding a multitude. Yet Jesus blesses the few loaves and fish, and there is enough. I don't have to tell you that there are a multitude of needs this day. As many of us receive Holy Communion for the first time since March, Christ comes among us with great compassion for our world. He comes in the faces of one another, in our homes, on Zoom, in the street. He comes in broken bread. He comes in the brokenness we see around us, in wounds, in scars, in suffering faces, and in the limp itself. Christ feeds us and all the world with boundless grace, even as we become bread for a starving world. A limp for sure, yet no longer on the run are we. A deep peace comes over us. What we need, all we need, is here this day. There is enough. Amen.
confident of God's care and upheld by the Spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. O oh God, our Savior, bless your church around the world, where believers must be isolated from one another. Be present to us through your gracious word. Give to our bishops, pastors, deacons, and congregational leaders wisdom for their tasks in this challenging time. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. O God, Redeemer of all, bless the Jewish people with your covenant promises. Bring an end to global anti-Semitism and strengthen ties of cooperation and friendship between Christians and Jews. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. O God, creator of a wondrous earth, Protect the glories of your seas and lands. Replenish groundwater supplies. Refresh lakes and ponds. Send rains where there is drought. And shelter forests from wildfires. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. O God, sovereign of the world, Form the leaders of nations to strive for justice for all. Guide our government in dealing with China. Strengthen the world's democracies. Bring an end to racism in our society, our elected officials in how to govern with integrity. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, mercy is great. O oh God, storehouse of goodness, Visit all who face the coronavirus, especially those who are incarcerated. Give us, O Lord of life, a vaccine. Assist all who face eviction from their residence. Bring wholeness and healing to those who suffer in body or spirit, especially those whom we name now, either by entering into the chat feature or unmuting. Jackie, Rhonda, this week. Larry, Georgina, the Menendican sisters. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. O oh God, giver of bread, teach us how to feed the hungry, the children starving in war zones, the families who cannot afford groceries, the homeless on our streets, the farmers devastated by pestilence. Give to all creatures their food in due season. O oh God, oh hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. O oh God, everlasting mercy, we praise you for the lives of all who have died in the faith, especially Blessed Mary and Dominic, who preached your word with power. At the end, bring us with all your saints to your heavenly banquet. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And now as we prepare to share the peace with one another, not able to embrace or hug or be physically together, I invite you to turn on gallery view if you are on Zoom, and a few of you may also like to unmute yourself so we can hear a few voices as well. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. you. Peace be with you. Peace. With you. Peace, 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 everyone. Everyone. Peace. 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 peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace to everyone. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace all. Peace, 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 peace. Peace, 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 peace.
We are indeed great gathered as people of God today in our homes around the country, in the Chicago land area, some of us on vacation, in various situations in our lives. And we are grateful for your generosity. Holy Trinity is not closed, our ministry goes on as we gather around word and meal, receive strength for our lives, and as you serve the earth and its people in your daily lives. So thank you for your generosity. Um, whether you give online or you use Venmo or you um, send a check to the office, we are occasionally in the office as well to get mail and to be with each other with social distance. Today's what we call loose offering, which we would have put in a plate if we were together, will go to support One North Side, an organization that we have been a part of or its predecessor for um, many, many years. And we thank you for supporting One North Side. And you can do that with some of the instructions on the screen by going to our giving site. We have two forums per week where we gather in smaller groups to talk about important um, issues in our faith. And today's forum will start 15 minutes after the end of the service. It's called You Are the Body of Christ. And we will debrief, we'll discuss a little bit of the experience of communion we shared this morning and have uh, some reflections also about some spiritual and theological meanings of communion and what that might mean in this time of quarantine. Our forum on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday at 10 a.m. will be Mary is for Lutherans too. And next Sunday morning, Bo Surratt will lead us in a forum called Evening and Morning, Patterns of Daily Prayer. And the Zoom links for these are on our Holy Trinity website. Some of you will have, I hope, set a table or will be setting a table today to share the Eucharist and to receive the bread and wine in your home. And we would encourage you, we would invite you to take a picture of your table and send it to Bo in the church office so that we could have a collage of Christ present in our homes and at our tables. Later this week, there will be a survey, an online survey to help us reflect on online worship, communion during a time of pandemic, some of your preferences, and uh, considering when you would feel comfortable returning to the church building. So we hope that you will fill out that survey when it comes to you. And with that in mind, some of you may prefer to receive communion in person, and there will be another opportunity for that on Wednesday, August 19th at 6.30 p.m. in our garden. Please uh, go to our website and fill out sign up for a place. Last time we did this, we only had five who signed up, so don't be shy about it. And if it gets filled, we will um, schedule another one either that night or in future weeks.
May the blessing of the God of Sarah and Abraham and of Jesus Christ, born of our sister Mary, and the Holy Spirit who broods over the world as a mother over her children, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. covenant of your baptism, living among God's faithful people, hearing the word of God and sharing the Lord's Supper, proclaiming the good news of God through word and deed, serving all people, following the example of Jesus, and striving for justice and peace in all the earth. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.